Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel uh, about coin learning videos. I do really appreciate you being here. If you are one of my subscribers and you have watched parts one and two of this, this is part three. You are going to learn an incredible amount about doubled dies. If you have not had an opportunity to watch parts one and two, I strongly recommend that you go back to my channel and watch those too, because it will be very important as to what it is that I'm talking about in this particular video that is covered in parts one and two. With that said, we are going to forge forward with this and you guys are going to enjoy this video. So let's get ourselves going, shall we? So we're gonna cover a subject that has fascinated the coin industry for decades, and it is the doubled die. Now I use the term doubled as in plural rather than double singular, because a die in order for it, a coin, I guess, a coin in order for it to be a doubled die has to be made with a die that has been doubled, not singular. So meaning that, for example, the one that most people are familiar with is a 1955 Lincoln cent double die that you see right here on your screen. And that is an example of what's known as a class one hub doubled die, meaning the hub that produced the die that made this coin actually stamped the die twice. All right. That means the exact same image was stamped twice on the die. The die then went on to make coins and created coins that had a doubled image on the coin. That's class one. We are not going to cover class one in this because the 1909 reverse of the Lincoln cent, the Lincoln wheat cent that I'm going to cover in this is what's known as a class three double die. It is not the exact same image stamped twice on a die. It is actually two different images stamped over top of one another. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but believe it or not, there are quite a few other class three double dies that are out there. Before we begin with the whole double die thing, I need to at least impress upon you that up until about a year and a half ago, even myself, I was con confused when it came to how the whole minting process works. What happens from when a coin is designed to where it actually becomes a coin. So I'm going to try and simplify that for you here really quick so that the rest of this video will make sense to you. Here we go. 60 seconds or less, go ahead and start a stopwatch. I'll do my best. Basically, the coin design starts out as a Galvano. That design is then transferred to what's called a master hub. That master hub essentially goes on to make what's called a master die. Now it's important to note here that hubs have an image on them that is raised or positive on the surface of that particular hub and dies have an image that is incust or reversed, if you want to call it such, of what a hub would be. So master hub, master die. The master die with its incust image then goes on to make what are called working hubs. When it makes a working hub, it makes a image on that working hub that looks just like a coin you would see. Those working hubs then go on to make working dies. Those dies have an incust image into them and that is what produces your coins. So now that you know about the minting process, how exactly is a doubled die made? Well, simple. We're only going to talk from here forward about two parts of the minting process that are going to make any difference to us whatsoever. It's the working hub and the working die. Master hub, master die, we're not gonna talk about those anymore. Working hub, working die. So in order to get a doubled die, a class one double die where the image is doubled on the coin, like the 1955 double die, which is a class one double die. It's what they call a rotated hub double die. 
the working hub stamps the working die once that working die is taken out it is annealed by you know heating it softening it so that when they put it back in to have the hub stamp it another time because they want the image to be as clear as possible stamping it once doesn't get you a super clear image so when they put it back in the machine to create that second stamp the working die was rotated just slightly and as it was rotated just slightly and the hub the working hub i'm going to stop calling it working just because i'm going to mess up eventually and call it a master by my and i don't want that information out there so we're just going to call it a hub the hub comes down onto that die and it stamps it again. When it stamps it again, it stamps it in a slightly different location on that die. From there, that die is taken out. It is finished in the process of turning it into a die and then it starts making coins. Great, now you have a class one doubled die. So now you know how that image is created. It's the same image stamped twice on a working die. There you go. So what are we talking about? We're talking about class three double dies, and that is a little bit different. Now let's get to the whole reason for this video, which is the class three double die, which is one image over top of another. Now the Mint doesn't like anything to do with multiple images in any one given year. Why? Because mistakes like this can actually happen but there are examples of it where it has happened. One of the most famous examples is the Lincoln Cent series in the nine, year 1960. It's the 1960 small date over large date, which is what you see right here. It is actually a small date version. Most people know that there is a small date of the 1960 and a large date. And the Mint, in their infinite wisdom with one particular die decided to create what you see in front of you. They also decided to come up with the fact that they needed to repunch a mint mark on it too. So you get a repunched mint mark as well. That's a subject for a whole other video as to uh, what repunched mint marks are, but so we'll cover that in another video. But there are other examples of uh, class three double dies not many, it is a very, very rare double die. And the other example that a lot of people are familiar with is the 1942 over a 1941 Mercury dime. Right there, that's what you see. It's actually two images stamped over top of one another. Trying to save dies would be my guess uh, as the US entered the war uh, in 1942. Okay. So let's go all the way back to 1909 again and take a look at this. And you can obviously see now that I've pointed it out that there is a type one image underneath a type two image on top. Let me also cover that the rabbit hole research group that pretty much kind of dove into this and nailed down what this image actually was was not the first, we were not the first group or first people to discover this image. We are only the first people to explain what it is and how it happened. So with that being said, I do not want to take credit for discovering the uh, class three doubled die uh, that you see in front of you here, because it was not me who discovered it. It was the rabbit hole research group that nailed down what it was. Up until that point, there were a lot of people in the coin industry that felt that this particular image that you see was actually what's called lathe skipping, and that is not the case. The rabbit hole research group even went so far as to take the coins, the type one and the type two, and have them micro scanned and measure all of the devices on the reverse itself so that we could apply those measurements to what we're seeing on the class three double die. And it indeed, 100% matches, the measurements match from a 
type one, two of the type one design that's on the bottom of the class three and the type two and the design that's over the top of the type one on the doubled die. So that right there is the blow your mind moment when it comes to the class three 1909 double die. I'm gonna cover in a second the rest of the mind blowing moment. You guys are going to find it funny because in this particular segment I had to retake, uh, I have a different haircut uh, and the end segment that you'll see in a minute actually uh, has me with the old haircut. So anyway, going on. Uh, so what was going on in 1909? Obviously we know that in 1909 in June and July, they were, the mint was, producing uh, Lincoln cents with the initials VDB on the back of it. In August, on August 5th, they stopped production of that particular version of the coin with the initials on the back of it. And four days later, picked up making the coins without the initials in on August 9th uh, in 1909. And the class three double die actually exists on both with the initials and without. So they made or continued to make these class three double dies, not only in June and July of that year, but most likely continued on for several months making these, trying to rectify the problems that they had with the type one uh, reverse on the 1909 Lincoln cent. And with that, there are actually examples of this particular class three double die that exist on a proof 1909 Lincoln cent as well. And there it is right there. That, as you can see, is a proof Lincoln cent uh, 1909, no VDB on it, and it holds a class three doubled die on it. This class three double die also exists on three very unique 1909 San Francisco minted coins. These all three of these particular coins do not have the VDB initials on it. One of those three examples is what you see here, which is, believe it or not, already an FS numbered coin. It is the 1909 S over horizontal S. And that particular coin, that particular variety, if you search for it, will actually, you'll find th all three different reverses on some of those coins. You will find 1909 S over horizontal S with the type one. You will find it with the type two and you will find it with the class three doubled die reverse on it. So there are actually two other 1909 S's that are available with the class three doubled die on it as well. If you need any more information on that, you can always go to Variety Vista. I strongly recommend that you do that. That is going to be your best source for it. I have left a link to it in the description below so that you can link to it. But here is a picture of the web page uh, where you can go to it. For decades upon decades, and probably even a century, there have been numismatists worldwide, especially in the United States, uh, that have tried up one side and down the other to find a 1910 Lincoln cent with proof of a reverse of a 1909. And what they've been looking for all along are the initials at the bottom of the reverse of the 1909 Lincoln cent. Those initials would solidify the fact that yes, indeed, there were reverses from 1909 that made their way into 1910. Now, a coin like that would be worth several millions of dollars would be my guess if that were ever found and proven. However, up to this point, none have been actually discovered. So how do we know that there were reverses that made their way into the year 1910? Simple. Uh, there were the type two reverses of 1909 that were subsequently used in 1910. 
And the reason why we know that is because that is the prevailing design that goes forward uh, from the year 1910 on is the type two reverse that was created in the year 1909. Now, here's where uh, the, I guess, sneak peek into episode four, part four of this particular video series goes into. In March of last year, a gentleman by the name of Sean Tu, who is part of the rabbit hole research group that had been studying the 1909 type two over type one class three double die, noticed in an eBay listing a 1910 cent with that reverse on it. He purchased it and brought it to the attention of the rabbit hole research group and the, the hunt essentially was on. And it wasn't much more than a few hours after he discovered it and brought it to the attention of the rabbit hole research group that another gentleman by the name of Jay Painter also discovered the second one of those. Uh, and yes, indeed, as you can see on your screen right here, there are multiple versions that have been found uh, of the 1910 with the reverse of a 1909 Lincoln sent on them. And it is not the reverse with the initials. It is the reverse with the class three double die. I sure hope that you guys are going to tune in for part four, where that is what we will cover in depth in that particular series or part of the series for this video series, you are going to really enjoy it because there are a lot of people that do not know about this particular reverse on a 1910 cent. Thank you again for watching guys. I really hope that you have learned an incredible amount. If you have, please hit that like button Subscribe if you want more information or would like to make sure that you have updates when they become available for more videos. That is where the notification bells after you subscribe will definitely help out. Have a good afternoon and enjoy the rest of your week.